seek to disconfirm it. So within the areas of building the, uh, the right model, we seek to falsify, and, and, and calibration helps us in there. We seek to build confidence that it, 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 it predicts, um, predicts uh, factors, for example, that we didn't tell it about up front, um, the outcomes of interventions that, um, that were planned on the basis of earlier model results. It, it anticipates those. It anticipates data that, we, um, that we've later collected. Um, and uh, often the, the needs here are quite specific to model purpose. Often a lapse here is either an oversimplification of the situation, inaccurate dynamic hypothesis as to how things work, but there's other reasons too. The question we want to focus on here is have we built the model right? And if we didn't, how can we find the source of the problem? Do we implement our planned model logic as we intended? Um, do we want one thing and instead we put mechanisms in place that entailed another thing? either because of a misunderstanding on our part or sloppiness or what have you. And this is the, the province of classic testing and quality assurance within the uh, software area. It's verification rather than validation. And peer reviews and testing uh, come to the fore as, as key best practices within this area. And a lapse here is typically a model defect or bug. We speak about a distinction in software between faults and failures. A fault is some underlying defect, and a failure is a visible problem that helps manifest that defect. Some of the worst faults are those that don't have any failures that are obvious associated with them. Um, often complex models exhibit its surprising emergent properties, and trying to distinguish those from bugs is often quite challenging. Um, there may be things that we consider on the face of it quite implausible, but actually turn out to be natural uh, outcomes of our model assumptions. And perhaps they tell us things about the world we didn't know. Perhaps they tell us simply that our model um, uh, is, is, is not, um, is not the, the description that, that or the specification that we sought. Um, and uh, trying to distinguish these things from bugs is, is, is challenging. Um, so some surprises reflect mistakes in our implementation. So we, we put something like this in Java, thinking that it's equivalent to something like this, and we find out that it's not. This means something very different. Um, here we have A divided by A, which is 1 plus B, uh, 1 being uh, 0, rather than, than this. So sometimes there's, there's oversight or, or misunderstanding or, or simple typos or what have you. But some of the Sometimes you end up assuming that it may be one of these and investigate, and then you find out it's actually one of these. You think it's a mistake, but it actually turns out to be a real insight. Okay, so what is debugging? Debugging is the process of locating or identifying and removing defects or faults from our programs based on observations of failures or some sort of aberrant behavior. The best debugging strategy is avoiding it, um, and there's good ways of doing this within, within modeling. Um, broadly, they go under the, the designation of defensive program and offensive program. Um, we're going to talk about best practices for these uh, later today, as time allows. Um, one of the one of the key processes that will help prevent these are peer reviews. Having other people look over your model, either while you're building it side by side with you, and what's known as pair modeling, or by looking at it after the fact and what might be called peer desk check or even a formal inspection. And this is something we've done in our group to good effect, and it's something that, that everyone in this room could probably benefit from, including myself. Um, but, but there are other ways. For example, trying to get your model to fail as quickly as possible if one of your assumptions is wrong. We make use of something called assertions. Okay? Um, uh, and uh, it's very easy to enable, uh, to make use of assertions within, within Java. There's a, uh, a keyword that's called uh, assert, 
and um, you could simply assert a condition is true that encodes your assumption that it is. We're going to talk about that um, in a separate lecture. Um, let's talk about um, let's talk about uh, debugging though. The basic debugging approach that is frequently used within um, software development, which you could use uh, within modeling very readily, I certainly do, is when you see a problem, try to simplify the occurrence as much as possible if you can. If, if it seems that it, it requires simplification, do so. And then you're going to need to try to locate the fault source, and that's a multi-step procedure. Um, you gather data, some sort of understanding of the context that reproduces the problem, and this may involve ripping out whole areas of the model to see the simplest condition that reproduces it. No. there in one uh, a presentation for later today on uh, how you can use these things within your um, within your model but uh, suffice it to say that it's it's quite simple okay so when you do have an unexpected problem um, the first goal is often to simplify uh, error occurrence and uh, you could argue that, that really these two are, are part of the same process basically if, if this error is only occurring very infrequently um, or it's occurring under, under um, quite uh, difficult um, to reproduce uh, conditions, um, or uh, only sometimes. Uh, what you want to do is save a copy of your model. This is extremely important. Save a copy so you're not modifying the original model, and then just rip out portions of it, disable portions of it, to see if you can get get some sense of what's kind of the minimum set of things that are needed to reproduce the problem. That alone often gives you great insight into what's causing it. If you disable death and the problem goes away, there's a pretty clear indication that it has something to do with either the population size or the, you know, the death occurrence itself, for example. Um, or you disable birth and death so you have a stable population and you see if the problem is still there. Maybe it turns out it's only for people who are added into the metal after the fact. If that eliminates the problem from manifesting itself, you, it again gives you strong indications of some ideas where it was. It also helps you quickly reproduce the problem, which can help you uh, zero in any quicker. And then you're going to, and the best thing to do is, if possible, jot this down on a piece of paper. Um, have some hot hypotheses in mind about what might be causing this. Come up with some, some good guesses.
guesses for, for where this might be. Maybe it's something you recently modified, a bit, a bit of tricky part of the model you recently modified. Maybe you didn't see this problem yesterday, so you have a sense it's one of the three things I modified earlier. This, this process of forming hypotheses is much, much easier if you don't modify that much between tests of the model. So it's really good if you test the model very frequently. So when you see this problem come up, you have fewer hypotheses that might explain it. In other words, you're, you're more confident about where the problem might lie than one of the one or two things you've done since you last tested. That's not foolproof. It may only have manifested with different parameter values than you were trying before, but, but it can help you a lot to, to, to do it on a frequent basis. So you have hypotheses, and maybe focus on one of them, and you figure out ways that might help lend confidence to that hypothesis or help disprove it. Maybe not, maybe prove is too strong a word. Lend confidence to it often, often. And you try then to use one of those strategies to, to investigate it. So you say, well, you know, this thing's not occurring when death is disabled. So I have a guess, maybe it has something to do with calling handling deaths. That when deaths occur, I do this set of complex uh, calculations. So I'll instead have deaths in the model not use those calculations. Let's see if it then occurs. And oh, it still occurs, okay. So it probably wasn't that. You re-enable that, perhaps. Or perhaps you leave that out still, just to have it be very, very simple. And then you start looking at things where maybe the model population is tipping to zero. Maybe the model population is getting too small to perform some calculation. And, and you go and you start to investigate these hypotheses. So, so this is a, it's very important that this be a goal-driven process. It's not a, um, it's not a simple flailing, just looking at everything. You have in mind, okay, well, what might this be? And you, you muse about it, you think about it lean back and take a bit of time and and think about sort of what's been going on, what might be a strategy that would let you fix this. Um, and you keep on doing these things until you can fix, fix the detail. Um, and often you're simplifying, simplifying, simplifying the process. You're turning things off, disabling things to get as simple a situation as possible. And often then, the fox will show its tail, and you'll be able to identify it. You'll be able to identify it quickly. Okay. Um, there are times where this process is not followed, and this bug may, may just persist for long periods of time intermittently. That's not a good sign. Um, often, if you get serious about locating it, and you get serious about simplifying the situation, and if necessary, just ripping out whole areas of this copy of the model, um, you can zero in on it quite readily. You just have to do it systematically and with, with um, hypotheses in mind. Set aside the time, and you can often find it quite readily. And then once you're done, look for similar error, errors. Like, if, if you made this mistake, what other mistakes might you have been vulnerable to, wherever you go look for it? And then find out what it is about the process that left you vulnerable to this error. Was it um, based on a misunderstanding that could be corrected? Was it based on, on a simple misunderstanding of something from Java, for example? Was it based on a misreading of certain data? Was it based on uh, a, a uh, failure to check some condition? These are things you can learn from. You can learn to improve, to reduce your vulnerability to similar elements in the, in the future. So a lot of it is a matter of localizing, zeroing down into where the, the problem is. And you want to compare good and bad versions. One where, if you can get to a point where it doesn't, um, it doesn't have a problem anymore and uh, with, with many, many simplifications, and you have the next previous one where it does, what's different between them? You just change something. What is that that, that made it not manifest? Note sometimes down on a piece of paper what does and does not work. And, um, and alternate between thinking and experimentation. Okay? Um, sometimes seeing the path of execution is really important here. And that's where attaching to a debugger will be very useful. Um, 
sometimes you want to observe the model state just prior to when the when the fault is manifested, when something comes up, when the null pointer error occurs. You want to see what's going on. And you can do this with a debugger, or you can do it by printing out things. You can also observe the path by printing things out on the console. You say, I'm here, I'm here, I reached here. Print number, you know, pound sign one, pound sign two, for, you know, trace ln pound sign one, pound sign two, pound sign three, and you see where it, where it goes. Or you bring out the, the debugger and you can actually step by step check. Um, so compare with previous versions that were working. Read error messages given in any logic. Don't just ignore those things in red that spew out on the console. Go look at them. They're your friends. Um, they may be messengers of bad news, but that bad news will help you eliminate a problem in this model version and reduce your vulnerability to problems like that in the future. Um, confirm that certain assumptions are true prior to the occurrence of the error. Talk with someone about this. Maybe perform a peer review. Have them look over this. They may find something you missed. And specify and investigate the top hypotheses. Okay, so let's talk about debugging uh, AnyLogic. Um, AnyLogic's researcher version contains a tool called the debugger. And we can attach to any logic from debuggers elsewhere. But you shouldn't reflexively just go use a debugger. Debugger is a very powerful tool, but it's not one that you want to use in all circumstances. Um, you, um, you want to exercise it judiciously and with caution, because it takes a bit of time to fire it up, etc. So what is debugging? Debugging is the process of locating and fixing faults behind observed failures. Um, and uh, um, you, you often you will use output from manual tracing and reporting and you use it to the console and you use it interactively to, to try to zero in where things are. Um, sometimes you can use tools like AspectJ, which we've used together with AnyLogic, which is an aspect-oriented programming tool. And there's a tool called Log4j, which I strongly suggest that you think about. I have a model which uses that. I, I can't remember in the example models if it's ABM model with birth, death, or another. I think it may be. But this allows you to do customizable multi-level logging. And what that means is you can have scattered through your program calls that basically say, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And the fact that it's, that it's multi-level allows you to enable or disable certain levels of messages. So if you only want to get a high level understanding of what the program's doing, it will tell you things like I'm, I'm starting to run, I'm stopping my run at this time, I'm, um, I'm writing something to a database or something like that. On the other hand, you could have very detailed messages at a much lower level that is normally disabled for output, which say things like, I just fired this transition, I just, I just entered this state, I just, uh, person X just died, that sort of thing. And um, by, by just changing a file on your disk, you could actually, just, just saving, changing one thing in it, you can say what level of logging do you want it to do? Do you want it to output more, di more information or less information, okay? And you can use an external debugger, as I said. Um, and, um, and finally, you can use the, the professional um, professional debugger, or the, the researcher version. Okay, um, so let's talk about um, using, using output. This is, this is the normal um, technique we use most commonly. It's extremely lightweight, very flexible, easily targeted, minimal learning curve. On the other hand, it requires a little bit of markup. Um, we have to go in and sort of paste in print statements. Um, and it can require many iterations to, to localize a problem. Um, and then you have to deal with limited uh, capacity of console. So what do you do? You, you print out things. And sometimes you print them out in a way they'll appear as red, like so-and-so sent a cure message to, to such and such. And you can do it with trace ln, or you can system.out.println, or system.air. This one is going to be in red if you do it. Um, you can do trace ln, it'll be in black. That's the sort of most abbreviated one. And you put those around your code, and you see which of them are hit prior to the error, and you use them to report on the values of variables. Um, okay, so um, uh, for example, uh, here here's a an example of this. Um, 
in a cure message, we have system.error.println sent cure message to so and so. And this is basically saying, okay, I've just sent a message, it's reporting it. You could see it reporting uh, down here. And you could see probably the people to whom it was received saying, I was cured, I was cured, I was cured. Um, okay, um, so, so that's a, a helpful thing. There's another thing that you can do, which is um, you could set up custom UI elements so that when you push a button, it starts reporting certain types of information. And when you click a mouse on something, you could use sliders to change things in a way that hints to the nature of a problem. Maybe it changes the rate of something, and you see when the rate's really high, the problem manifests. When it's low, it doesn't, or what have you. Okay, uh, so what I'd like you to do is to load an ABM model with birth death, okay? Okay, so file, open, and uh, we're going to have to go to, oops, not, not in there. I want to go to any logic. And I actually have it open already. So um, here we go. Uh, oops. ABM model with birth death. Um, there it is. OK. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about this. So let's run this model. And uh, what you'll see here is a, uh, a shifting population. We've seen this I think, in another case. We certainly have in the tutorials. Um, click on this. This model exil exhibits a lot of um, a lot of kind of food for thought. It's it has a lot of features in it that kind of demonstrate certain things, including aspects of a demographically evolving population, including aspects of um, of uh, recording data, such as each person in this model, um, each each woman in this model is associated with. Um, We'll store up a li list of her children. So here's a woman, a uh, female, um, and here's a list of, of her children, for example. Um, and uh, it also will record, you know, performs uh, birthing process. It actually records um, um, the last time infected for people, all times which uh, they were infected over, over their history. Um, and you can save away this infection history. Um, for people, uh, and generally it demonstrates a variety of features. It also demonstrates the use of enums, as people yesterday learned, that this sort of being able to label uh, using nice names, um, things like sex and, and ethnicity in a way that it doesn't leave open the opportunity for, for mistakes. So this model is, is, is useful, um, but, uh, but it's reasonably complex, and sometimes it can um, exhibit problems. Um, Okay, so, um, right, um, so if you pause the model execution here, um, and you go, uh, you can go down to a person if you, if you want to, um, a person level, and uh, it'll, it'll kind of show where people are in space, and, and um, it says pause model execution and, and click, uh, click here, aha. So if I click, um, click on a person, within this model, it will actually go and print things out <coughs> on the, um, on the uh, console here. So see, by clicking on this, it will it r report information on this particular person. So here it reports information on the person's children. Um, so uh, here's another woman. She has uh, two children. And um, if I go uh, click on her representation here, um, it'll report information on those two children. And uh, it reports the, the age of the kids and, um, and what their names are, et cetera. So um, that's an, inter uh, an aspect of kind of interactive reporting, which can be useful for, um, for debugging. Um, another component is this notion of logging. And again, Log4j framework is an open source popular framework for doing logging. And I do have an example. Basically, you can define what logging level you want to report a message. And there's six different levels, the most serious of which is fatal for a fatal error. But you can also have a, a trace. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, folks. Fatal. <laughs> sorry, we're, we're I, I've got to be very careful speaking to this audience about a, a fatal error. Um, fatal in a, in a computer science context normally means uh, the program will crash 
part is, is that it, it has to terminate. Um, I understand for us people with your family has a different connotation, but uh, but here it means the program will die, um, and uh, and so uh, things go from that level uh, down to the level of, of tracing uh, in very in a very detailed way. Um, and a given logger can can send you email when it occurs. So. Um, <coughs> For example, on some systems, um, if an error occurs, we want it to report back to the mothership that the error has occurred. Um, so we have it send email to Dylan or, or, or um, Mohammed or something like that. Or it'll upload an error message reporting the nature of the problem to a server. Um, and Log4j can be used for this. It can also be used um, for printing out very detailed messages. But the key point is that there's a configuration file that can be used to enable or disable this. Um, this is the logging class, and you call messages on this logging class. So you call trace, and you give it a message, or info, give it a message, all the way up to fatal. These are in level of increasing severity, okay? Um, and, uh, and this is an example of sort of um, uh, a use of a logger. You just you report this information to it. You say log, logger debug. Logger info means this, this will be reporting information with a higher priority than will this one here. And you can have this config file, um, which basically says, OK, for each logger, what level of logging should it actually report? Should it actually print out? And where should that logger go? In this case, it goes to your console, just prints out in front of you. In other cases, it may go to. Um, go to a database or go to a um, uh, go to an email message etc um, so so here's an example for it, it go it's going to the um, uh, to just be printed out okay but um, I'd like to now turn to so so these are really important these are really helpful and sometimes folks just putting logging in your in your um, model and then just enabling it selectively so you can see what's going on is really helpful and if things go wrong in a big way, you have a real problem, just enable all the logging to whatever level, and you can see exactly what's occurring just before the error. This is one of the key pieces of information you want to get. If there's an error, you often will look just proximate to it, just before it, to see what's going on then, so you have a sense of its context where the error occurs. That's not always where the error is, exists. That may just be where the, fault, the failure is manifested. But often, the error occurs just before that. And so it's worth zeroing in on that area, knowing where you're at. Okay? You can do that with print statements, or you can do it with, um, with explicit um, uh, logging. OK, um, so I, I have a, a, a file which, or a, a project which, which lists this. and. Um, I'll try to talk about that a little bit later. OK, so let's talk about external debugging in Eclipse. Um, the Eclipse editor is one of the most popular extant software development tools around. I've mentioned it before. And it offers plugins of a huge variety of sorts. Um, it's, uh, there are probably hundreds of plugins for Eclipse, um, maybe upper hundreds of plugins. Um, and these include very useful tools for your purposes, like debuggers, profilers, visualization tools, version control of models. Um, so it supports subversion, et cetera. Um, what we're going to talk, talk about today is debuggers. Um, in separate occasions, I've talked about how profilers can be used with any logic to report or where memory is being used or how quickly it's um, uh, where, where the time is being spent in a model. Um, so Eclipse can be used to debug any logic models at the Java source code level. So if you're comfortable looking at the Java source code, um, you can actually do so very readily and insert what are called breakpoints um, within the Eclipse debugger um, there. OK, so, so um, there's a, in order to make use of the Eclipse debugger, there's a one-time setup that has to take place, um, which involves um, involves doing one thing in any logic and one thing in Eclipse, OK? Now, in this particular model that we're looking at here, in this model, the ABM model with birth death, um, uh, I have, um, uh, excuse me, um, OK, this is, aha, uh, uh -huh. OK, right. It was, uh, maybe it was a, a, a variant of that. Um, 
I thought I had actually provided one which has, ah, here we go. So folks, um, I'm gonna have to ask you, um, do I ask, yes. Um, so, so excuse me for, for a second. If you could, um, I, was, I was confused about um, two different versions of the same project. So if you could close ABM model with birth death, so you do file, so you right click on it and say close. Um, or if you do, um, uh, you, you could do it through the file menu. Um, and if you do file open and example models, there's a model called Eclipse debugging example. And you can just open that, okay? Okay, so the Eclipse debugging example I I is a case where I've, um, I've instrumented it for debugging. Okay, um, and that that involves going to the properties of the uh, simulation, um, and there's an advanced tab here, and it involves setting <coughs> some what are called Java virtual machine options. So that means when it um, when this thing is going to run, it will do some extra work to let the debugger know about it. Okay, it'll basically tell, it'll sort of announce to the world that hey, I'm here. I'm waiting. slides that show this process uh, on a step-by-step -step basis. Um, so basically, you have to do a one-time setup that sets up Eclipse to know, to allow debugging connections and sets up, e uh, sorry, any logic to allow debugging connect um, connections and Eclipse to know how to connect to any logic. And then every time you want to go to debug, you go to Eclipse. So I've called up Eclipse here and I'm going to open the Eclipse workspace. Um, I'm going to tell the debugger to connect to an AnyLogic process. Excuse me, I start the AnyLogic process running, interrupt the process, and set the breakpoints. Okay, so, so there's some kind of stuff you set up in Eclipse and I'm not going to have you do here. Um, okay, then you have to set up, um, one thing you do want to do is you want to point it to where the code associated with your AnyLogic project is stored. Okay, so um, uh, there's a there's normally a folder, and I, I'm not sure where it is on, on your folks' computers right now because they're being stored on, um, on some of the things are being stored on a network. But on my computer, if I go to users um, under my folder, users Nate, and I go to any logic workspace, what you'll find here is that um, there's a set of, of information associated with of various things that I've run. So these are some that I ru I've run just recently, for example. Um, and, um, and I can go, uh, and I can go uh, find code within them. So if I go to build, for example, um, I can go look at source code that is, is generated, excuse me. Um, got a, this one here, source.generated. And I can actually see the source code, the Java files that have been generated by any logic, okay? So these things are actually generated. They're generated to your disk, and you can actually uh, point to them. Okay. Um, so um, here, what I'm going to do is is uh, try running this thing. The last time I did this was with a different version of any logic. So um, trusting that it it is it's not pointing things at at different locations. So I started this running, um, and I, I'm going to leave it in the opening screen for now. And now, what I'm going to do is go over to Eclipse, and I'm going to open what's called the debugging perspective. So any logic supports several perspectives. Perspectives are basically customizations to the any logic UI. Excuse me, Eclipse. The Eclipse UI to show um, to, for different tasks. In this one, there's something called the the um, debugging perspectives, which helps me track down variables. Okay. Um, so I opened up the debug perspective by, by clicking here and doing debug. Um, and um, that's, what I've, uh, that's what I've got now. Um, that's the one that's selected here. Um, and uh, then what am I going to do? Um, okay, um, I'm going to start the debugger, okay? Um, 
and uh, what I'm going to do is is uh, go up to uh, run and I'm going to do uh, debug okay oops oops that's not what I wanted um excuse me um, I, I do this and I do any logic application boom okay um, okay so it's launching an any logic application um, debugger and basically what it's doing is it's trying to connect to any logic here and you notice it just um, it's it's uh, trying to connect here um, and okay oh uh, it's trying again okay great um, so this may be a version difference issue. Let's, let's just see okay okay It should be able to start up and then connect like this so that it shows what's going on. But it looks like it is having trouble. Um, so I may have to... Okay, yep. Uh, did it work? Ah, here we are. It, good, it worked. Okay, great. So um, here we go. Um, so what this is showing me here is is something in uh, in this window, which is listing what are called different threads associated with any logic. Those are things that are running in parallel. Okay, now um, one of them will become my model execution thread in just a minute. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do right now is to um, uh, go and write. Um, Okay, um, so I'm going to go uh, open up the um, the source code file for this. So if I do open file and I go Nate AnyLogic University. Okay, so AnyLogic, you know, uh, excuse me. Um, uh, okay, it looks like AnyLogic, AnyLogic uh, workspace. It looks like they've changed that location. Um, any logic university works. Oh, I see. It's dot any logic uh, university dot any logic university, and then workspace. There we go. Um, and then Eclipse debugging example build. There we go. And you see these things were just built. And then I'm going to lo open up source dot generated, and I can go open up here. It's my various things. So I could, for example, click on person dot Java. Okay. Um, so now I can actually uh, uh, edit. Now, unfortunately, it's down here in the window. Let me see if I can um, drag it up, um, uh, drag it up, uh, so I can see it better. I'm that that might. Um, the problem is, uh, I'd like to. Um, I appreciate that, Dylan. The problem is, uh, I should really shift this whole window up. Um, so I can I can see it. Problem is my screen real estate is way too. Um, okay, so maybe what I can do is to drag it over here. No, um, I think maybe I have to drag this whole window over. Um, no, okay, that's that's not working either. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. Can you drag that? Yeah, I'm just gonna minimize this here. That's, that's ah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Or it's not going to listen. That's weird. Yeah, it's, it's, very it's weird. having problems with moving it. Eh? Okay, why don't I just display it down there? That's that's fine. I don't know why it's not not yeah, sort of. Yeah, that's okay. odd. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna I have person Java. Here we go. So this is the actual code uh, from from any logic here. Um, so if I open person Java. Um, I can go down and, for example, I can click on perform birth. Um, so perform birth within this model, as some of you know, is a, um, is a method that um, uh, actually leads to a birth taking place within the, within the model. And um, what we're going to do is to set a, a breakpoint on this. And we can do that by double clicking over here in the margin and it will set a breakpoint at this point in the program. What a breakpoint means is if you run this model, 
it will, it will interrupt the execution every time that point occurs. You can set conditions on the breakpoint to only interrupt it a certain number of, after a certain number of times or under a certain number of conditions. But basically, you can, you can double click over here to stop execution. Okay, now, the model is not yet actually operating. If we click over here, we'll suddenly um, get, um, get uh, interrupted here. And, okay, this is, um, okay, this is for um, triggering another thing for triggering the, the bugger. That's not what I wanted. I want to continue on here. I actually don't want to break on that. That's another way of doing it, to trigger the debugger to wake up at this point. But I'm actually not interested in that. So let me get rid of, get rid of that. Let's continue on. So here I have this uh, choice of how to um, evolve things. And where are my debugging controls? Um, OK. Um, unfortunately, my screen is so small that I can't see the normal things. Ah, here they are. Um, OK. so. So let's continue on. So we've just broken this execution. We're going to just um, resume this. OK, so this is running. And now a birth has occurred, so or is about to occur. So the joyous event is are coming. Um, and uh, we've just stopped here. This is an indication. This is where our execution is uh, within this Java code. So a birth is about to occur. Um, and what we can do is step by step go over this code. So for example, we can step down here and we could say, okay, who is, who is the mother? And we could see information um, on, the, um, on the mother. For example, um, information on her ethnicity, um, information on, um, on her initial age, um, um, information on whether they were originally infected uh, when initialized in the model, the pregnancy status, the sex of the person, Etc. In this case, it better be a female for it to be performing a birth, and indeed, it is. It is female. Um, so I can step down like this, um, step by step, and you'll notice that it's it's executing each of these things. Now, sometimes there'll be a, a method call here, and when a method call like that goes on, you have the option of stepping into it and walking through how each component of this is working. So here's a loop, for example, this for loop. And by stepping one at a time, we can execute that for loop several times over. And each time we can inspect, for example, the value of the variable over which it's looping, or this, um, the associated value p associated with that. So here we're looping over the mother's connections, adding each one into the offspring. And we can step through it step by step, see each, each one being added. We can also see exactly what path it's taking uh, along these lines. Um, so this is what's called uh, a debugging interface. Um, what's notable is that we can inspect what is occurring at a certain place in the program. So if there's an error occurring at a certain location within your program, maybe it's generated code, maybe it's code that you wrote, you can actually go in here, open it up, set a breakpoint just before then, and see if you could see what's going on just prior to that. The alternative is you print things out there, but this provides an additional method. Now, I've only shown you a very small fraction of what's going on in the debugger. Um, there's some additional information that may be of use here. One thing is you may be interested in what's called this. And those who were in the Java session yesterday may recognize this. Does anyone recognize what this thing is here? This list here, it's a call stack. What this means is that we may be in performed birth, we saw, and then we went into this established offspring connection based on mother's family, and that's the one we're in right now. That was called by performed birth, and that was called by execute action of some transition, a timeout transition. And that was called in turn by this transition timeout sort of know you're in a, a transition timeout. And then that was followed by some things and up the levels of that one. So that gives kind of where we're at right now. One of the nice things is that we can go back up different levels within the stack and inspect variables. For example, here we can see, OK, what's the offspring back here? This is one level up or two levels up. Um, 
this is not code that we wrote, but we can check sort of what's going on at this time. Um, who's the person it's associated with? You, you notice it says A equals person. Um, it's a person uh, associated with an environment, um, a continuous 2D environment, etc. cetera. Um, and you can kind of walk, walk up this level to understand the context. So this, um, this so-called debugger allows you to do some, some notable things. One of the more interesting things you can do is actually override the value of a variable. So you can actually change the value of a variable within, um, within this Eclipse framework. Um, so, um, okay, I, I show some examples of this. Um, let's go look at uh, some additional windows here. Um, so if I'm in Eclipse here, there's, uh, there should be other windows that show variables. So this variable, and again, I apologize that my, my screen is so small. Here we go. There we go, the dream of centuries. Um, okay, uh, it, it should have should have enlarged to the, uh, here we go. So this shows the variables currently in operation. So there's this, which is referring to myself, the thing in which this is invoked. There's offspring, the one pointed to by, um, excuse me, so I'm at, I'm one level up right now. Uh, no, 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 I'm at, at this level. Okay, that's right. So the offspring and mother are two things passed to this method as, um, as, as parameters. You could see them right here, offspring and mother. Um, and, and then this A and the P were from right here and here. So these are the variables that are currently active right, right here. Um, you'll notice this tells us where we are in the program. What called what called what called what down to where we are. These are the breakpoints which we can set. We can set breakpoints when exceptions are thrown. So when a problem arises, we can set breakpoints at certain points in our code. Um, and uh, over here, there's something called, I think it's called expressions. And um, this can allow us to actually change the value of a variable. It can allow us to, to um, ch take one variable, maybe it, the value is three, and we can change it to two, for example, and see, see how it changes the, uh, the execution. So, um, No, just, just in this particular situation, it doesn't change anything in the model. It just lets you essentially play around with an experiment locally to see if you were to change this, how would the behavior change? But it absolutely does not modify the model in any way. Yeah. Yeah. It lets you, because what you're doing here, folks, I mean, I, I hope as a big picture, one of the key things you can get is the, the two, I know this is a lot, this is the first time you've probably seen a debugger and it's a lot to absorb. What a debugger gives you is a couple super useful things. One is to be able to set breakpoints, so you can stop at a certain place, say just before an error occurs. And the breakpoints can be quite sophisticated in terms of their, um, their formulation. Um, and uh, you, can, you can edit, edit the properties require it to be hit a certain number of times before it stops um, and, uh, and filter it based on, um, on, on, on certain criteria about who's, who's doing it. So that's useful. So breakpoints are one thing. You stop it, say, just before a problem occurs. The second thing is you can inspect the values of variables. You can inspect where an error occurs within a program. So, um, yeah. No, no, no. The code of the model can be modified. Um, the code in the, this code is, is generated by any logic, and you can't modify it. Precisely. If you see, like, say you see your method of interest. No. You mean in the debugger? Or, or within, is there any way of doing that, period? 
Um, Okay, so so to be clear, if you define a method, you could certainly do that. Um, okay. uh, if you um, y you know if you define a method, you could change it in whatever, whatever way you want. But I think what your question is, if for code that's automatically generated by any logic, I think is your question. So so th folks, there's a lot of questions. Like like if we look at this code, this is the same code we can go inspect in any logic using any logic itself using. Um, you know, by doing right clicking on this and saying open with, right. it's it's the same same code. A lot of this code is generated automatically, like execute action of or or get name of state, or, and and all those sort of things. And I think what you're asking is, can you change that? So um, breakpoints, ability to inspect the value of variables before things, and ability to, um, to change variables. These are all uh, very valuable components of doing things within, um, uh, within a debugger. Um, I would particularly note um, that if you have a, uh, have a uh, problem, say a problem associated with a null pointer exception, it can be really valuable. Let's let's go and terminate this uh, execution. Um, so if I go here and um, I'm looking for my here's debugging, um, and I want to uh, run this. Um, so uh, I want to disable this breakpoint. Boom. Um, and now I want to just continue to run it. So now I'm back to to running it here. Um, that's all well and good. How if I set a null pointer exception to happen? Um, so, um, so let's suppose I go back to the model, and um, suppose I want to set it so that um, so that uh, one of these classes throws a null pointer exception. It throws an error, in other words. In other words, there's an error that's encountered. Um, maybe we do it in establish offspring connection based on mother's connection, and I'm going to eliminate this check here. Okay, um, so now this will sometimes throw uh, throw an exception. Let's go run this thing now. Debugging session. We're going to go run this. Okay, now we're going to go over to to Eclipse, and let me make sure this is yep, it's being recorded. Good. And now what I'd like to do is to go debug this, and it's going to try to attach to it. Now it's all attached. Okay, great. That's that's all well and good. And now what I want to do is I want to go over to breakpoints and I want to catch null pointer exceptions, okay? And, and let me then uh, go back to this and start running this thing. Okay, um, okay so uh, I have a thing called uh, trigger debugger, which I, I sometimes will use to, for other reasons, but I'm going to keep on going here. And um, okay, we ran a certain uh, distance, but now now we just uh, experienced a um, an exception. Okay, so there's an exception thrown. Um, see, it says null pointer exception hmm? on the screen here, and that null pointer exception it brought me to that exact place where this is occurring. It's occurring right here, right? Not surprisingly, where I where I um, I commented this out. Now, what's the advantage of that? Okay, so I'm here. W well, what's what's doing? Well, I can go in and I can see what's going on. Well, first of all, it's okay. It's occurring here, so something about this is throwing an exception. Maybe it's something to do with mother. Um, uh, does does um, 
Uh, sort of what's what's the the context of of um, of mother here? Um, I can actually find out um, information on her um, on on her characteristics and so on. Now, I think what's more significant is and. Um, Dylan will have to remind me um, of this, uh, Dylan. Within this uh, expressions thing, I should be able to evaluate an, an arbitrary expression. Is that right? Okay, yeah. I've, I've rarely used that myself, too. But, um, but I believe there's a way right here to actually get it to, um, to evaluate this expression directly and um, reevaluate watch expression and actually get it to list out these connections for you in an interactive way. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm not, um, not getting this uh, right now in the, in the right way. I'm not sure where this SVN window is up there. But, um, but uh, there's a way in which to, um, uh, in which you can, I'm pretty sure to sort of uh, print this out. Um, directly um, and uh, in other words to get it to evaluate this and then I could test okay yeah it's actually that that exact problem so in other words it's that mothers dot connection is is in fact um, is in fact null that this thing that this thing is returning null sometimes I can tell it by browsing into the variables here browsing into mother by expanding this and um, and sort of looking okay what are the what are her connections here, but um, but sometimes it's not obvious exactly where to go um, associated with this. Um, so in any case, uh, I believe you should be able to actually evaluate this and um, and uh, have it actually print out the value. In which case, you could say, okay, that's that's indeed what's going on. But of course, the other context is. Uh, you can um, you can see what's called this, and sometimes you can inspect other variables. So this will bring you to that exact place, and sometimes it's useful since you can see what's going on there. Okay, so that's any e that's Eclipse debugging, and any logic. Um, uh, Dylan, maybe you could find out about that reevaluate watch expressions, just so you can, um, because right now this thing is just not evaluating at all, and I'd like to be able to tell people later how how to do this. So. So you'll notice the, the uh, expression here, Dylan. Um, it's, it's odd that it's in, um, print, in, in quotes like that. And I'm wondering uh, why, why that is. Um, but, but it's not evaluating it uh, right now. So um, OK, um, enable it, yeah. In any case, um, that's the Eclipse debugger. It's a heavyweight instrument. Um, but sometimes if you have an error, particularly an exception that's thrown only after the model's been running for a while, as is the case here, you'll notice that this was only this was running for for you know a fair bit of time. It spread the infection and so on um, before the exception was thrown, and so this allowed me to to intercept that place and go in and inspect what's going on, go in and see who had called what at that time for it to be um, for it to be called. So here we see who the mother was who the offspring is on which this is being called, and that may help me more quickly localize uh, what's going on. Okay. So uh, anyway, uh, we'll probably get an answer on how you can evaluate that expression uh, later on. But in the meantime, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this. So um, one way I can do it is I can detach. So um, this thing here and um, Remind me for a second. Um, detaching, um, terminating execution from there. Okay, right. Uh, so I'll just I'll just continue it. Boom, um, and and then it stops. In this case, it, it crashed. Okay. So in other words, uh, the model. There we go. Model stops. Okay. So anyway, uh, Eclipse debugger uh, externally attached. Quite similar to the debug in AnyLogic, except the AnyLogic debugger allows you to at a more fine grained level set breakpoints on events and set breakpoints on certain points in within the any logic interface set breakpoints in your own code which can be very very useful okay so debugging in any logic